Morning, guys. So it's Sunday today, and yesterday we got our um, seed potatoes from FreeCycle. We put them in the ground, did a few other bits and bobs. I also, yesterday, as I mentioned in my last video, I went and picked up a load of onion sets, again, from FreeCycle. It's just an amazing resource, and I've had a bit of a Google and checked it out, and it is, you know, global, so please do make sure you are on your local free cycle group and just keep an eye out because you never know what comes up. Like I said, last year I also had onion and potato sets again. Now I hadn't planned on planting any onion sets this year. We're gonna be planting some today and I'm gonna talk about a little bit about the difference between growing from sets and growing from seeds, but growing from sets is just so, so simple. It's so much easier and your failure rate is going to be pretty close to zero if you if you do it right. But the easiest thing in the world, but we've got so much to do today. So much so that I've written a hero list. I call it a hero list because if I get through all this, then I'm considering myself an absolute hero because um, I've set the bar quite high here. We've got quite a bit of sowing to do. We've got chickpeas to sow, that's at the top of the list. I've got to finish tidying the paddock where I was working yesterday because I want to move the goats up there, which is the next thing on the list. We've got to move two lots of our trailer hens. We've got to move some pig food. I've got a load of bins of pig food, which I've got as far as the car park, but I haven't got any further. I need to get them where they're going. Sow the onions, cook dinner as always for the family, move the compost. So the compost that we had delivered, we've moved almost all of it. We've got a tiny bit left to move and I want to get that done today. That'll have to be one of the last things because where I'm actually moving that, I'm putting it in the trailer of the ride-on mower and it's going to sit there until I'm ready to use it, which won't be for another few weeks. So we're going to be using the trailer quite a lot today. So we're going to get all the other jobs done with it first and then load up that so that the grass where the compost was dumped can recover. We've also got a load of basil to sow. We, we use so much basil, it would be impossible for me to grow too much. So I want to sow quite a lot of that today. Water my plants and then clear away my tools. And you know, not only my tools, but other bits and bobs that we've got lying around. I'll show you just here outside our kitchen. We've just collected up all the stuff that's been lying around this area that is uh, in need of being put away. We're going to have as well today the assistance of my nieces because we are babysitting. We're in a childcare bubble with my sister and her husband and their family. So we're looking after their two girls today because they had to go and take care of some stuff last night and this morning. So we've got them and it's a bit like, as my wife says, it's like trying to operate with the handbrake on. It's, uh, you know, it can really slow down your efforts. Not so much me as much as my wife, who is the primary child caregiver in this arrangement, it has to be said. Anyway, that's that. We're gonna go and start getting on with our list now and we're gonna start by clearing that top paddock, I think. So we are, at least for the first two or three hours, we're having a mass mobilization of the family. We're all working out here to try and get some of these jobs done. And uh, you've probably noticed, you know, my, my kids, obviously, we're a family and we do things together, but they're not super involved with many of the chores outside. So every so often we sort of say, you know, this is a, an optional job, not optional and uh, you know we need some help and we've done that this morning so for three hours we're all going to chip in together so we've already cleared the tools and everything away in the paddock here so all that's left to do we've got some bedding up there from their old house mixed in with manure i've got one trailer load on the back of the wagon which is over by the compost bins ready for me to unload it i think i've got one more trailer load to move and I've just relit the fire because I mentioned yesterday that my inclination once I've lit a fire is to tinker with it and not get a lot else done. And I think verbalizing that I went completely the opposite way and I just lit it and walked away, which isn't a problem, but it means there's a big ring of stuff that didn't get burnt around the outside. So I've just relit the fire. Rockus, my, son, my eldest son and my daughter are just going to collect up the timber from around the outside, the bits that didn't get burnt and pop it on the fire here. So while they're doing that, my wife and Torrin and the mini minis, the ones that we're looking after, have made a start moving the peripheral stuff attached to this trailer, you know, the feeders and stuff. They're moving that now. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna move these guys down onto this lovely fresh grass. And that's the job we're gonna do right now.
So that's the first set of chickens done. Are we actually finished, love, or nearly finished? Yeah. Nearly finished. And, uh, well, you can see, that's where they are. That's where they were. So this, got the mothers just in time. This can all recover, and it will. The grass will come back nicely. Um, the bonfire's all taken care of. We've uh, cleared up all the stuff in the, in the top paddock there. My daughter kindly has um, emptied the trailer or is in the process of doing it. So I'm going to hitch the trailer up now. I'm going to go around and pick up the last lot. Or perhaps my daughter will. Maybe she'll want to drive it around. Um, and then we're going to start moving the, uh, the, the pig bins. Because again, while I've got the trailer hitched up, it'd be easy to do it with that. Thank you, son. My son's just returning my knife. And uh, yeah, then, so I think the next job, once my wife's finished there, is we're all going to jump over and move the other hens because those are the jobs that are most onerous. They're the ones that are most dreaded, if you know what I mean. You know, they're quite a, a big job that has to be done all at once. You can't just do it in piecemeal steps like we can everything else. So I think we're going to... Uh, dreaded's the wrong word. We don't dread any of it. Um, but I think that's going to probably be the next big job we do um, while I go and get the trailer key, the tractor key, I imagine that uh, that's what we'll be ready for when I come back. Move the pig food now, I'm going to quickly feed them. Fian's taking the trailer down to where the rest of the manure is that we need to pick up for the compost. And that's the next job. We are rattling through this list. High five. Enthusiastic child, right here. Don't need any hands out of there, mate. So that's all the bedding and manure moved from there. This paddock now is just missing the house. I need to bring the house up. In the meantime, I've got the dream team of my daughter and my eldest son, and they're just coming round now and uh, helping to straighten up some of these posts. So the dream team here have just been round with me, and we've what's called back rammed all of these posts. So, you know, they're not perfect, they're never gonna be perfect, but they are, for now at least, all upright. It's gonna give them a much better chance. So we're getting inching closer and closer to being ready to move our goats. And uh, I will definitely, I'll share that whole experience with you because I think they're gonna, they're just gonna feast on what's on the ground here. They're, they're gonna absolutely love it. We've got our last uh, trailer load here. So what's gonna happen, I'm gonna park it up so that rockers can move it into our compost bins. And while he's doing that, my daughter and I are gonna move that big greenhouse. So the Toggenbergs made it across while we were moving the, the house. So they're in and look, happy goat. Now we'll get the tricky one. There we go, all across. All bar fern, which we'll do after lunch. Fern's gonna be a bit of a special case because she um, she can't get up at the moment. We're having to get her up a few times a day and take her food and water. So we'll, uh, we'll come out probably with a bit of help from Jackie after lunch, but they're all gonna be very happy in here. 
So we've still got a little bit of work to do, a few tiny bits and bobs. We've got to, you know, bring the hay rack across and stuff like that. But that is 99% of the job done. Um, another bit of news is we sold all of our kids now. They've all got new homes and the homes they're going to, every single one of them are amazing. Yep, that's it, love. Well, we've got those little jobs to do, but we're going to do them after lunch if you want to have a quick break. Or we can do them now. now. Okay, two seconds then. Now, Rock, did you say? Yeah. Right, let's quickly hit them off then. You all right there, buddy? So we've got on incredibly well this morning. It's now lunchtime, so I'm going to go in, get something to eat, a decaf coffee, and then we'll uh, take a look at our hero list and see how uh, see how we've hit into it, see how far through we are. We've tried to, or I've tried to, focus on the more difficult stuff, and hopefully, I know we've still got one more lot of hens to move, but uh, hopefully, apart from that, it should be more fun and easy stuff. So I've just finished lunch, and... Uh, Come to check my list. Let's go through it. So, tidy paddock, done. Move goats, almost done. We've just got fern to do, and then I need to move the, the base of their house. Move hens, one. Oh, that's done. <clears throat> Number two, we're gonna do that next. Move pig food, done. Sow onions, not yet. Cook dinner, not yet. Move compost, not yet. Sow basil water plants, not yet. Clear away tools, done. So four down, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to go. Actually nine to go, because I've thought of something else I need to add, and that is collect from bakery. So we're making progress, not loads of it, but progress nonetheless, and we have done some of the bigger jobs. So next job is to move our second lot of hens. My wife has gone and made a head start, so I better go catch her up. So I found my wife with the goats rather than the hens, and um, as is like her, you know, she'd already started moving all the stuff from the bottom of the house. You'll see that's all been moved now, and we've together put it in the bottom of the house over there. So they've got their floor in there. Like I say, goats like to be up off the ground because they don't like that damp all the time. So they've got that there, we've got some fresh bedding in there and we've moved Fern. Fern, bless her, she couldn't get up. We had to actually move her in the trailer. We had to lift her up and put her in the trailer to get her across. She's now just outside the house there. I'm sure you'll see her in a minute and um, eating some of this fresh grass and enjoying the sun. We've got the vet coming tomorrow to look at her because she's just deteriorating. If I'm honest, I'm not sure that she's going to be with us much longer. It's really, really sad. As you know, we got her as a rescue. We didn't know how old she was, and and I'm not sure what's up with her. She, I don't know if she's got an infection or what it is, but like I said, we've got the vet coming tomorrow to have a look and uh, see where we are. But if the vet can't pinpoint it, then it feels like we are nearing the end of Fern's time with us, which is sad, but it's part of what we do, you know? So that's the goats all done. My wife's just gone in to get a bottle to bottle feed our kid. And I am going to take this opportunity in that case to go and fill up our trailer with the last of that compost. I've got a little window now, get that job hit off the list. And then my wife and I will both go and move that second lot of hens.
another great job done off the list. And uh, you can see how happy they are every time you put them on fresh ground. After they've been here for a couple of weeks on this ground, we'll come up here and they'll all be in a flock, a little flock together quite tightly because they've kind of exhausted the foraging. But until then, you notice how spread out they all are because they're all so busy with individual little projects to do. <laughs> and uh, when they're like this, you know, you know how happy they are. So I've just been and collected all this bread from the bakery. Another job hit off the list, which is fantastic. And obviously this goes a huge way towards keeping our feed costs down. Right, let's go sow these onion sets. Again, just another incredible thing, another incredible thing about being alive in the modern world, that these, someone had over-purchased, didn't want them, and I'm doing them a favour by taking them off their hands and putting them to good use rather than them having to go in the bin. Got these from Free Cycle, two packs of onion sets, and I'm just thrilled, obviously. Super, super happy. So again, you know, I'm gonna plug Free Cycle, make sure you're a member of your local group. So I'm gonna pop these in now. They're a sort of medium length crop. They're gonna be in till mid to late summer. And so I need to find a home for them where they're gonna be happy for a little while. And maybe I can have some shorter growing crops in around them. Now I'm actually gonna make a separate video all about onion sets, the difference between onion sets and onion seeds and you know how to plant them everything else i'm going to make that as a separate video so it's sort of searchable rather than it being hidden in amongst uh this vlog so uh, i'm going to put these in now so that's all of our onion sets sown and next thing i'm going to do is water them in so while i'm watering them in I'm gonna do all the rest of my watering and that only leaves, I think, although I haven't checked the hero list for a little bit, I think it just leaves some sowing of our peas and chickpeas and basil and then also cooking tea. So if we can get to the point where I've done everything except cook tea and it's time to cook tea, I'll be a very, very happy man. I just, I didn't expect to get through it all. It was a really ambitious list that I set myself this morning. So just, being able to get through that has really, really made my weekend. I'll feel so much happier. This will be the first time, I think, since I had my injury back in November, that I'll be going back into the working week thinking that I'm actually, maybe even dare I say it, ahead. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna water our onion sets. They want, on they want watering in really quite well because you want the, um, you know, you want the onion to, to wake up. Plus, we haven't actually had any rain here for a little while to speak of, so I'm going to actually put a drop of water around the whole bed. This isn't something I do very often, and if I wasn't sowing these onions, I wouldn't worry about it now. One of the other big advantages of the no-dig gardening method is the reduction in the amount of watering you need to do. So that's all my watering done now as well. I've watered the greenhouses, or the polytunnel, should I say. All that's left to do now, I think, without checking my list, is a little bit of sowing. So I'm going to, next up, I'm gonna sow a load of basil. I'm just gonna sow them all, sow it all in lots and lots of pots like this. And then we're gonna transplant that out. We're going to put some of it in between our steps on our paths there. I'm gonna interplant that with basil. And we're gonna keep some in pots as well, put some in the house, leave some in the polytunnel. We're just gonna have some everywhere because like I say, it would be impossible for me to grow too much basil. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sow these peas that I've been soaking, just dried peas that I bought that I've soaked for about a day and same with these chickpeas. And the idea being a little bit experimental. In fact, I'll show you, I'll do it right now. I'm going to grow some, which I'm going to use for shoots that I'm going to basically harvest the second that they arrive, you know, as soon as they're ready we'll harvest them and then some I'm going to grow and allow to build into a much bigger plant but still harvest for shoots but I'll take the shoots off sort of as they grow a bit bigger rather than those first shoots that come out the ground and uh, 
it couldn't really be simpler. So if you were planting because you wanted to harvest peas, you're going to want to give them quite a bit of space, like we've done over there on the main bed at the back, where we've got our bamboo wall up at the back. You know, we've got pea, pea plants along the base of six or seven of those bamboos, bamboo canes. But because we're only going to use these for shoots, we're actually going to plant them quite densely. Not as densely as we will the others that we're going to harvest sort of entirely as soon as they start shooting, but something like that. So we've maybe got 30 plants in this little area, so it'll be a really dense bush. That's the plan. Um, so I've seen Charles Downing doing it. He is, you know, the godfather of no dig. And uh, yeah, I'm sort of copying his idea really. So we're going to just cover that in some more compost, not very much, and then give that a good douse with some water. But these guys, because we're not expecting a great deal out of them, you know, we just need them to germinate really and then put on that first flush of growth and we're gonna harvest pretty much the whole plant at that point. We're going to really pack these in quite densely. Credit to the pajama gardener whose idea I'm using here because it's not something I've ever really considered growing before, but it just seems so simple. So there's our compost in there. And like I say, we're gonna be quite mean. We're not gonna give them much space because we literally just want them to germinate. So there you go. We're gonna do probably three pots and then we can check back on these in a week or two. And these are just dried peas that I've bought from the supermarket that I've soaked for 24 hours. What could be simpler? And now we're gonna do exactly the same with our chickpeas, which are, I think the other, the real word for them is, is it garbenzo beans or something like that? And uh, so these are going to give us bean shoots rather than pea shoots. Just going to make a bit more space up here on my table. I put things up here so that they were away from Rattus Rattus. There's a few things that I don't have to worry about. And I think I've got him now anyway, but I'm going to just do it on the safe side. I'm going to keep my, uh, my beans and peas up here, or most of them at least. Everything's starting to really come on now. Look, down here my asparagus peas are shooting up, cucumbers, lettuce, we've got spring onion, sugar snap peas, radishes, lots and lots now shooting up. What have we got in here? We've got some golden ace cabbage in here, I don't know if you can see them just starting to come up. And a lot of these were only planted in the last week or so. And then all of my beans are doing fantastically. Let's pop these pea sprouts out the way to make room for our chickpeas and we're basically going to just do exactly the same as we've just done and then I'm going to pop these outside which leaves me just one job to plant my basil Like I say, we're going to do all sorts of different things with these pots and we'll definitely be planting more, or sowing more should I say, later in the season we'll just sow more and more, we, we cannot have too much. Sorry about the noise, there's a, seems to be a tractor working on the road door next door. But in these small pots what we'll do is we'll use these to transplant out in between our paths and in the bigger pots they're the ones where we'll let grow on and you know, we'll keep basil in here, for example. So, all I need to do now is top these up, just give them a light dusting on top. And then we'll stick these down on the floor all together. So I only need one, one sign for now and give them a water. And I think that's it, we're done. Let's go and uh, check out the hero list, shall we? Okay guys, moment of truth. So chickpeas, done.
Tidy paddock, done. Move goats, done. Three out of three. Move hens number one, move hens number two. Done and done. So onions, cook dinner. We'll discuss that. <laughs> sow onions, done. Move compost, done. Collect from the bakery, sow basil, done and done. Water plants, clear away tools, done and done. The only thing not done, cook dinner. And that's what I'm going to do right now. So I consider this hero list complete. I am so happy. So I'm gonna go cook dinner now and I'll speak to you guys really, really soon. As always, it does massively help me to grow the channel. If you take the time to just press that like button, perhaps leave me a comment down below. And of course, make sure that you're subscribed. If you wanna go a step further, you can support us in other ways by sharing our channel with someone who you think might enjoy it by checking us out on the podcast. And if you wanna go even further, you can become a patron at patreon.com forward slash self-sufficient hub. All of the links to the stuff I'm talking about is just down there. So thanks ever so much, guys. I genuinely appreciate you watching and I will speak to you really, really soon. Cheers.